What drives your life? That's the question that you need to think of. In the book of Ecclesiastes um, 4.4, 4, it says, I observe that the basic motives for success is the driven force of envy and jealousy. Everyone's life is driven by something. We don't know. And I don't know what's, what's driven your life now. Well, most dictionaries define the verb drive as to guide, control, or to direct. Whether you are driving a car, a nail, or a golf ball, you are guiding, controlling, and directing in at that moment. Now, question. What is the driving force in your life? Well, right now, you may be driven by problem or circumstances, a pressure or a deadline. You may be driven by painful memory, a haunting fear, or an unconscious belief. There are hundreds of circumstances, values, and emotions that can drive your life. Now, I have five of the most common ones. Number one is many people are driving by guilt. Will they spend their entire lives running around from regrets and hiding their shame? Guilt-driven people are manipulative by memories. They allow their past to control their future. They often unconsciously punish themselves by sabotaging their own success. So in the Bible, when Cain sinned, his guilt disconnected him from God's presence. And God said, you will be restless, wanderer on the earth. That describes most people today wandering through life without a purpose. We are product of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. God's purpose is not limited by your past. He turned a murderer named Moses into a leader and coward named Gideon into a courageous hero. And he can do amazing things with the rest of your life too. That's your life. Like I said, your life can be changed and he can do it. God specializes in giving people a fresh start. The Bible says, What happiness for those guilt has been forgiven? What relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record. So number two is many people are driven by resentment and anger. They hold into hurts and never get over them. Instead of releasing their pain through uh, forgiveness, they rehearse it over and over in their minds. Some resentment-driven people clam up and internalize their anger, while others blow up and explode into others. Both responses are unhealthy and unhelpful. Resentment always hurts you more than it does the person you resent. And it's really true. Um, while your offender has probably forgotten an, an offense and gone on with life, you continue to stew in your pain, perpetuating the past and just always remembering what happened in your past. Listen, those who have hurt you in the past cannot continue to hurt you unless you hold on to that pain through resentment. Your past is past and nothing will change it. You are only hurting yourself with your bitterness and with your what? Self. For your own sake, you need to learn from it and then let it go. The Bible says to worry yourself to death 
with resentment will be foolish, senseless thing to do. Number three is many people are driven by fear. Well, their fears may be a result of traumatic experience, like what happened in, in their past. Um, unrealistic expectation, growing up in high control home, or even genetic predisposition. Regardless of cause, fear-driven people often miss a great opportunities because they are afraid to venture out. Instead, they play it safe, avoiding rest and trying to maintain the status quo. Fear is self-imposed prison that will keep you from becoming with what God intends you to be or what God want, wants you to be. You must move against it with the weapons of faith and love. The Bible says, will form love vanishes fear since fear is crippling a fear for life fear of death fear of judgment is one not yet fully formed in love the number four is many people are driven by materialism well their desire is to acquire becomes the whole goal of their lives like they want that, I want this, I want to buy those stuff. This drive to always want more is based on the misconceptions that having more will make me more happy. More important, more secure, but all three ideas are untrue. Possessions only provide a temporary happiness because things do not change. Now we eventually become bored with them and then want newer, bigger, and better versions. It also a myth that if we get more, I will be more important. Self-worth and net worth are not the same. Now remember this, your value is not determined by your valuables. And God says the most valuable things in life are not things. The most common myth about money is that having more will make me more secure. It won't. Wealth can be lost instantly, like the blink of an eye, through a variety of uncontrollable factors or circumstances. Real security can only be found in that which can never be taken from you which is your relationship with God. In the last one, in number five, yes, many people are driven by needs for approval. Like they wanted some approval by their friend, their family, their spouse. Well, they allow the expectation of parents or spouses or children or teachers or friends to control their lives. Many adults are still trying to earn the approval of unpleasable parents or their friends. Others are driven by peer pressure and always worried by what others might think. Unfortunately, those who follow the crowd usually get lost in it. Well, there's a lot of things that you know you can do so that you will be successful. But I didn't know all the keys to success. But one key to failure is to try to please everyone. Being controlled by opinions of others is a guarantee. It's a guarantee that you will miss God's purpose for your life. Well, Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. At the same time now there are other forces that can drive your life but all lead to the same dead end and his potential unnecessary stress and unfulfilled life always remember this nothing matters more than knowing god's purpose for your life and nothing can compensate for not knowing them and not success wealth fame or pleasure Without a purpose, 
life is motion, without meaning, activity without direction, and events without reason. Without a purpose, life is trivial, pity, and pointless. Seek the kingdom of God and all the things will be added into you. And you will be happy. And you will not regret it. Now in the next video, I'll be sharing to you the benefits of purpose-driven in living with God.